Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode here of uh, World of Tanks developer stream. I'm here with Mr. Bam. How you doing, Mr. Bam? Wonderful. Doing wonderful today. How about yourself, Tanksors? Absolutely fantastic. Um, I know we were talking about uh, a little bit of the weather here off stream, because that's what we like to do here. <laughs> Specifically, hold on, I'm, I'm going to call out a name here. Plum73 wants to know the weather in Windy City. So everybody, the rest of the, the next hour here, we're going to be doing a whole weather cast. That's what we're talking about here today. Just for you, Plum. Awesome. So if anyone gets mad, look at Plum. I kid. Treat, be kind to your fellow tankers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. So yeah, we were talking about uh, not only local weather, but our uh, eclipse that we had here in North America. Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to venture out and uh, see it for myself. So it was uh, magnificent. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys out there got a chance to see it, but it was definitely awesome. I, I envy you. And I, yeah, I'd be curious if anyone else in the chat who got to go see in the path of totality, the eclipse, I was very last minute planning and trying to think whether or not to go out or not. Ultimately, ultimately made the choice to stay home on Monday, but I did step out during the, the 2 PM to see the, you know, partial eclipse, mm -hmm. uh, which was still, you know, I, I had, it was exciting for me, but after hearing your experience, tank sores, I'll have to look forward to 2044. Yep. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. If, it definitely, if, uh, if you're able to do so, Mr. Bam and everyone else, I definitely uh, encourage you to check it out next time you can. But uh, we're here to talk about everything tanks related, Mr. Bam. So why don't we go ahead and uh, head on over to uh, World of Tanks related content. Of course. And hey, how about that new snazzy branding on a, onto our Twitch channel here? Watt Modern Armor, no, no longer the Watt console. Mm -hmm. So that's a nice change of pace. And we've also addressed that across our portal page, I, I believe our, our Discord, uh, Facebook. So pretty fantastic to see. We're finally adopting the title <laughs> that we've changed into our game uh, several years ago. I see uh, Mr. Gunny here saying that Steven... Uh, I saw Steven in the Eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> Steven uh, being our uh, 3D uh, alien Halloween commander. That's, uh, that's a funny one. He may have had something to do with it. Mm -hmm. Funny enough, I <laughs> missed opportunity. I was talking with the designers on Monday. Uh, like, man, it would have been awesome if we had done something just for, for Monday, turned all the maps to have an eclipse occurring uh, in the kind of the uh, the globe sphere of the uh, the sky dome, right? Would have been kind of neat to have something in there just to harken back to our real life event, right? So there's always uh, the next one, next one. We'll, we'll have it planned. That would have been <laughs> awesome, yeah. In 20 years, we'll get it right. <laughs> uh... <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's talk about some of the releases and the content that came out this week. And then we got some stuff to talk about next week, of course. You guys know the breakdown of these streams. Uh, Silver with Interest Challenge is back. You know it. You love it. What more do we really need to say? And speaking of bringing things back, this was another fan favorite. Uh, things that has been out of the game for a while. I actually can't remember the last time we ran an on track. Uh, you guys have been asking about this one quite a bit in the Q&As. So, yes, on tracks are back and we are starting it off with our uk line heavies so that means 25 percent xp uh, uh, uh i was about to say off <laughs> you get an additional 25 percent xp on every battle for the tanks listed uh as well as following discounts of 50 percent off for the medium three the matilda churchill one and the churchill seven and then a 30% uh, off discount for purchasing in the tech tree, the Black Prince, Carnava Carnarvon, I'm always going to mess that one up, the Conqueror, FV215B, uh, the Super Conqueror, and the Chieftain. Bam, we want more XP. We don't want XP off, please. <laughs> for this on track, you guys, you're going to lose your, your earnings a little bit more. You got to really work for those tanks. That's, uh, that's, that's really going hard mode, huh? No, uh, we, we wouldn't put hard uh, mode on tracks. We wouldn't put our players through that. 
And before anyone asks, no, I do not know the next on track that comes next. <laughs> but I'm sure the events team is cooking up something, and you guys can expect to see more contracts later in the year. Awesome. That's great to hear. And we all know you guys love some good war chests as well. Uh, and we have brought back our tank war chests just this week and made some changes that, uh, from the first version that you guys may have had a, a time to engage with uh, last December. Uh, so this new tank war chest, a new gold price of 800 gold to uh, redeem for one chest. We also have them in bundles. You can pick them up in the singles, in eights, twelves, and even 20 at a time. We also adjusted the drops, uh, the drop rates as well. There is now a 12% chance of getting a tank drop uh, in any war chest that you open. And with every 40th tank war chest that you open, you are guaranteed to receive at least one of the epic tank rewards. So in other words, if you don't receive an epic tank all the way up until the 39th tank war chest that you open, your 40th chest will in fact contain one of the possible epic premium tanks. Uh, worth noting, because you might get a rare tank and think that this is going to reset your counter, but that is not the fact, not, not the case. When you, if you do get a rare tank and that's in the drop table, that does not reset your counter. And then plus between Tuesday all the way till June 4th, Deal 1,000 or more damage in, in uh, 10 battles, and you can get one of these tank war chests for free to your account. This will be available only three times per account. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, let's see. Oh, and if you guys are curious, I don't have the list handy, of course, but uh, if you haven't already checked out the, the tank war chest in our store tab. You can see the drop table there. We provide all the tanks and the details of what tanks are available, either there or on our portal page. Awesome, awesome. We also had uh, a new tank debut last week. Why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about that, Mr. Man? We did. The Type 63 has entered the foray of World Tanks Modern Armor. Uh, this Japanese heavy tank, this is a Tier 8, is equipped with a reliable 105mm gun thanks to its great penetration, good reload, and accuracy. It has good uh, gun depression values of 8 degrees, but gains an additional 4 degrees um, when needed uh, in its auto siege suspension system. The, we've also addressed, this is a shout out to our super testers, uh, and we've also heard the feedback from you, the players that had a chance to pick up the Type 63 yourselves. We've increased the higher activation and deactivation speed for the auto siege mechanic on the Type 63 to happen at 25 kilometers per hour to keep you in that siege mode and maintain your aim on your target while you decide to move forward and backward from cover. Um, and the tank does fill a role of a heavy um, and doesn't have the armor protection to be on the front line. You'll want to take up more of a, a support role, similar to that of a medium tank, and take advantage of the terrain and your gun depression to only to expose the strongest turret armor while engaging. Uh, so I noted it really quick that, yes, the Type 63, we have adjusted its auto siege uh, deactivation, deactivation at 25 kilometers per hour. Wanted to let you guys know because, hey, we hear your feedback and we know that Previous uh, auto siege tanks have met with uh, kind of mixed feelings, uh, and most of our pr uh, previous auto siege tanks have the activation mode occurring between 10 and 15 kilometers per hour. Just noting here that we do have an investigation ticket. We're going to take a look at some of our older tanks and start to consider uh, a bump up and maybe get them up to 20, maybe that 25 kilometer per hour uh, activation. So not a promise, but something we want to look into because we saw that, you, that this was something a little bit more well-received with a Type 63. Awesome, awesome. Uh, I do I do like how aesthetically the tank looks. I know I mentioned it. Uh, on Tuesday, I got to play it on our community stream, and I didn't mm -hmm. notice that there's a, there's a little gap between the gun and the actual uh, hull of the tank. You, uh, a little gap? Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a gap between... <laughs> between the, the, the barrel and the from the turret in the hole the, the turret in the hole yeah and uh i believe uh some of our community contributors are trying to uh determine if you could shoot through it P petty and kb are saying yeah. yes you can and shoot right through it yeah 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 so it was uh it was definitely a fun a fun little uh 
surprise. I wonder if you could, uh, uh, apparently you could also like, you know, shoot into it and then have, have the shell maybe like even penetrate like into the tank. Oof. Yeah, which would be uh, pretty interesting to see. So w wiggle that barrel, protect that gap, and make sure people <laughs> aren't targeting you there. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, I don't think it's it's actually you know too easy to do, but but pos possible. It is there. Mm -hmm. Add sandbags to the gap, max max minor tanker. We'll fix that right up. So that was uh, everything this week. But what about next week, Mister Man? Next week we dub this commander week uh i see there's a lot in the uh the chat itself as well as our q a's a lot of requests to bring back 2d commanders uh you know are they coming back to the recruitment store or what, where else can we get um pick up old commanders etc um they're not coming back to the, rec uh, the recruitment store themselves however you can pick up various uh old 2d and 3d commanders in uh various bundles and with those uh we I'm going to kind of jot off a number of these bundles here. <laughs> um, we have the Crusading Rivals. This contains the Richard the Lionheart and Saladin 2D Commanders. Then we have the Barbarian Onslaught, uh, including Hannibal Barca and Attila the Hun, also 2D Commanders. The Roman Times Bundle. This includes uh, Scopio Africanus. Af I really should have read these ahead of time. <laughs> Scipio and African Africanus. Jeez. And Julius Caesar. There's, a, there's an easier one to read off. Both 2D commanders. Some favorites here. Uh, Kitty has claws. This is a 2D cat commanders. Yes, complete with VO. Ash and Ember are making their return as well. Uh, I can't recall if Ash and Ember were actually... VO recorded by actual cats, or if it was just a colleague doing some meows <laughs> into the mic itself. I'm going to go with that one. Oh, I think it's both a colleague and, and a cat. A team, cat as a team effort. At the same time, until proven otherwise. <laughs> uh, then for some of our 3D Commander bundle offerings coming up next Tuesday, the Graveyard Shift. We got some of our Halloween Commanders making a return. Ravenous Relf. Here we have him on screen now. The Monstrosity, Frankenstein's monster. Here we go. And the Warwolf. And up next, we have the Spooky Stars bundle. This one includes the Grim Reaper, one of my favorite 3D commanders. And Carmilla, the Vampirus. Then we have our Modern Digs 3D Commanders. Uh, Travis Sparky Nelson making a return. And John Frosty May. And then our last bundle offering coming out for the Commanders Week, uh, the Classic Looks. This includes Heinz Voltreffer Kraus. I actually really enjoy uh, his, his getup. And then George Sandman Harding. I uh, I really like this uh George Sandman 3D commander here. It's the tall socks, isn't it? <laughs> it's the tall socks. Yes, Every, everything about him is uh is cool. He's got like a little chain on his gun. He's got uh he's got you know a bunch of dirt on his face, but his goggles you know left a little silhouette. It's all clean and it's, you know it's it's, <laughs> it's got some character. We need more characters with uh the tall socks. That's it's yeah. We got to get some socks on Steven. <laughs> now, now we're talking. <laughs> that, that's our big new feature for com uh, commanders this year. Socks. Socks. I like it. Socks for all. Well, on the subject of commanders and uh, upcoming commander week, we love doing giveaways here. Don't we tank source? Absolutely. Um, let's kick off a giveaway here. Uh, we're giving away. Um, blah, 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 Two di different commanders here. Uh, Jolly Roger, the 3D pirate commander. And one other lucky winner will win the duo of the Ash and Ember 2D cat commanders. Awesome. Uh, go ahead and click on the link in chat and uh, you'll be eligible for our giveaways today. Just give us your war, give me an ID. 
and you'll be all set. I see a question from KB. Where is Anguida? Where is Anguida? He might make a, an appearance in a little bit. He's, a, he's lurking. He's lurking. Or we haven't, we working, haven't summoned him properly just yet. <laughs> we're working hard. I, I hear if uh, if you say his name backwards in the mirror three times, <laughs> you might appear in our Twitch chat. I do. Okay. We shall see. I can also just ping him on the side and say, hey, you're being summoned. <laughs> anyway, um, we're not done yet with Commander Week. A few more announcements and even a new 3D Commander inbound next week. Do we have a world debut here, Tank Source, that we can show everybody? We do. We have uh, our new commander here. What is his name? Hell Half-Life Anderson, 3D Hero Commander, equipped with a full radiation suit. Awesome, awesome. Looks snazzy. Before anyone asks, uh, Hell Anderson here does not have VO, but I want to stress our audio director... In his very busy schedule, was working toward adding a quick VO update to him. More of a kind of a filter to the existing gen generic commander VO to talk a little bit more like this. But we ran out of time. Wasn't going to make it in for launch. Maybe for next time. Okay. But the radiation suit commander still looks pretty fantastic. Check him out. He'll, he'll be in bundles and in store next Tuesday for Commander's Week. <laughs> Well, well, we'll keep that in the back of our minds. If we can afford to get that that VO in, a little bit of a muffled call out, that one went right through. You're shooting spitballs. I think we're shooting meatballs over here. What, did I say meatballs? <laughs> spitballs. Meatballs and spitballs. We're shooting spitballs. <laughs> All right. And then we also have a few other commander-related sales and challenges coming up. Uh, commander XP conversion. Uh, one gold can get you 40 free XP. Uh, we also have skill swaps, 50% uh, off. Various booster and consumable bundles. And also two new challenges. Uh, we have a bonus challenge called Commander and Conqueror. That sounds like a very familiar franchise. Anyway... Uh, the challenge here for Commander and Conqueror, totaling five or more, uh, do the following in a battle, uh, destroy an enemy vehicle, damage an, en an enemy vehicle, or spotting an enemy vehicle, and this can net you uh, some crew XP. And then every fifth completion of this task will uh, get you uh, a three times crew XP. And then the other commander-related challenge we have here is uh, the knockout bonus challenge. Injure an enemy crew member during a battle. This is available five times per uh, account per day. And this will award you various consumables and uh, commander XP boosters, including the times four and the times six. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And then we're nearly wrapped up on some of the uh, updates and offerings coming next Tuesday. But also, in case you guys missed... Uh, I forget when this one, this earn challenge was happening for the Senshi. Was that just last week when we, we ended that one or a week before? Any case, if you guys missed your chance uh, to get the Senshi, Senshi earn challenge complete, we will have the tank available to pick up in the store at a 30% off discount. Uh, and also uh, a fan favorite that only comes, these tanks only come by typically one time, uh, once per year. The black tanks and other select tanks will be on sale on Tuesday for free XP and gold in our premium tech tree. Again, not in the store itself, but check out the premium tech tree and you can find various tanks, including the black tanks, the Black Friday tanks, uh, on sale for free XP and gold. So let me make sure I heard this correctly. The black tanks and other select tanks will be available for sale. For free or and gold. Free XP and gold. Okay. Um, I'm double checking really quick if it was all of the black tanks. I believe I got clarification that it excludes our newest ones, um, the Object 703 and the Jaguar. Okay, just making sure my uh, my ears weren't playing games on me because th those guys only come, you know, once in a year, if that, you yeah. know. Once in an eclipse. Once in an eclipse. <laughs> 
Well, that is not all. Uh, we're also testing something very new and uh, exciting here. It's uh, Twitch drops for World of Tanks. Um, if you'd like to uh, participate in our Twitch drops, you can link your account on our portal. So go ahead and visit our portal and uh, you'll need to log in uh, and head to our your account management page on Twitch and link that there. Uh, once you're all set up, you're all ready to help us test Twitch drops when? Next Tuesday. Tuesday. So this Tuesday, uh, if you'd like to, you know, be our first in this uh, venture here that we have with Twitch drops, go ahead and set that up and you'll be eligible to win a 20 or five 25 uh, X, uh, silver boosters. So please do so if you'd like to participate. I know people have been asking about the Twitch drops for quite a long time. Uh, and yes, they're finally here uh, along with our new branding of the Twitch channel itself. It all kind of came together in a nice way. And, uh, for those of you that may not know what, uh, Twitch drops are, it's, uh, it's an initiative where you get to watch a channel that we would say for X amount of time, and then you're awarded a goodie in game. Excellent. Let's see someone uh, eating, eating cheese. First off, love your, your, uh, your name <laughs> website, temporary, temporarily unavailable. People saying doesn't work. Unable to connect. Okay. Our, our, our team is taking a look at it, so hopefully we can get that up and going. It just went live at the start of the stream, at least to my awareness. Well, it worked on Stevie Cakes' stream. Okay. I'm on standby for any updates uh, from KB and our nefarious crew here. I'll, I'll let you, myself or Tank Source will kind of bring to attention if things are up and going again. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you'd be earning five 1.25x silver boosters for uh, participating in this event next Tuesday. Okay. Alrighty. What does that take us, Mr. Bam? All right. No shout outs this week and no battle feats, uh, but we will be transitioning right over to Q&As. We are going to keep this one a little bit short. Um, so we might be ending the stream, uh, you know, a little bit shorter than uh, typical uh, this week, but... Uh, we will still announce our giveaway winners for the commanders right after the Q&A. So, tank sores, let's trans on, transition on over to Q&As. All righty. First question here. Uh, will 2D commander customizations return in the way that they were before? Were you able to choose the face, voice, and name and recruit them as well? Saw this one come through and thought it was just appropriate for the commander week and bringing back a lot of 2d commanders in bundles. So the quick answer to bringing them back as a recruitment option, no, but as we were trying to do with the commander week, offer them in various different ways for you guys that are not just about buying them out of bundles, but also available in challenges and war chest drops in various ways into the future. But, uh, in to think about the choose a face and voice and name customizations, I may have to follow up on that. I, I am not up to speed at the moment that much of that has been moved. I'm pretty sure you can still change the voice and maybe also pay to change their name. I might be speaking out of line though. I have to follow up on that. one. Sounds good. Uh, next question here is, can you add smoke canister consumables into world war two mode? Um, so we don't plan to bring in smoke consumables, at least not yet. Um, however, we have been toying with the idea. This is just brainstorming and discussion of like interest of bringing that mechanic into World War II mode. Um, and hey, be interested to hear what you as players think. Maybe not as consumables, but what if select tanks had a shell type, a smoke shell 
that instead of firing off a cloud of smoke there in front of you, it's more about firing at long range. Maybe if you want to block the vision of a, a flank of enemies at a certain range so they can't see you guys crossing a field or something. So it's less of, about the close range cover, uh, concealment cover, but long range. And additionally, we also amuse the idea like this could also be a good support mechanic uh, if we introduce shell smoke shells to the artillery class, perhaps. So again, not, there's not even any active work or documentation. This is just fun prototyping ideas out in our minds. Um, and we would want to see, you know, is, if this is even something players would like to see uh, come to World War II. I'm seeing a lot of no's. <laughs> Based on what I'm seeing in the chat, though. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it, it does sound pretty neat, right? Like, just a different way to assist, right? Not necessarily in doing damage, but in, in another role, mm -hmm. right? But uh, yeah, it's something just to think about. Yeah. Uh, next question here is, can we get the BL 5.5 gun on the FE-4004 Conway in Cold War? That will be a no. The tank itself never actually used the BL-55 55, 5.5 uh, gun itself. Um, the actual BL 5.5 uh, only fired two types of HE rounds, and both fire at a mere 400 to 500 meters per second, which is half the speed and velocity that of the rounds that travel in Cold War mode itself. Uh, this is coming from Plague, our, our lead vehicle designer himself, so no plans to bring that into Cold War uh, on any tank. All righty. Oh. And really quick, I think... Just back on the Twitch drops, KB just posted a new link to follow uh, to get yourself um, all set up for the Twitch drops on our portal site. Yep. Uh, in addition, uh, just want to restate this. that This is just uh, next week is our test to make sure that everything's working correctly and you know uh, set up in a way that uh, we could in the future then award everyone with more ambitious uh, rewards. But for, for the time being, it's just, you know, a test next week. I, just, I also want to call this out really quick. I happen to see it. Uh, aim for ace. What about an, an illuminate shells that Arties can fire? And they, I imagine they uh, explode out in the sky and kind of send out like a flare, kind of light up the area, maybe spot people like that. It's an interesting idea. Yeah. Things that we can like think about and play around with. Let's see. Next question here. Will we get uh, more Era 3 Western Heavy skins, uh, specifically maybe for certain tanks such as the Leopard, the Merkava, or the Leclerc? Uh, we'll talk with uh, tank design and production. Um, I, I've given this answer plenty of times. Skins, there's so many <laughs> different tanks into the game itself. While we are also working on brand new tanks to bring into the game, both tech tree lines and premiums skins is something we try to fit into our production schedule as well. So there's a long laundry list of tanks. That I know players are asking for so many different skins and even like uh, additional skins on some tanks as well. So nothing I can announce at this time, but certainly noted. All righty. Next question here. <laughs> Could there be a chance to adding the Churchill crocodile to the game? with a little trailer attached to the back. We discussed this a little bit. This, um, uh, cause this was uh, kind of tied to the flamethrower mechanics. If I, right. if I do recall, cause it carries like all the fuel in right. that trail. Right. I, yeah. I remember bringing this up too, when we were doing the hundred anniversary with the, you know, the flamethrower tank, I was like, well, we have our first flamethrower tank. Can we do this maybe in the future? And, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll let you respond to this. I mean, likely not right now with all the physics that goes in, we don't have a way of like towing an additional wheeled or treaded even uh, components to go along with your tanks. Yeah. Plus I don't even want to amuse the situations players might potentially get themselves stuck in certain, like, <laughs> I don't know, rocks, terrain undulation. One of my favorite words to use when talking about the terrain, apparently. Um, but, uh, I could see a scenario where you get stuck in a rock and you undulate yourself into space into like the next map. Yeah, I know you players find certain ways and maps to get yourself crammed with big, like the. I think I've seen a video of players taking the kaiju in Himmelsdorf and cramming it down a very narrow aisle, and then physics, 
physics does its way with it, and oh, then yeah. off to the moon, the kaiju goes. So, yeah, TLDR, <laughs> the uh, the crocodile tank in the trailer. Crocodile, perhaps. The trailer, likely not. Awesome. Definitely a uh, good suggestion, though. Uh, next question here. On the top three ranking screen, can we get a... Uh... Can we have a 2D Commander portrait pop up if you're on there? We had, uh, we talked about this on stream, Not I feel like not too long ago. Um, we haven't really had a chance to follow up with design uh, and like our UI design as well. Uh, the thing about how to do this that doesn't feel kind of off or silly in a certain way. Personally, both the, um, the post-battle results screen as well as the MVP... Um, I'd like to kind of revisit the format of it and the way we present players on there in certain ways. And yes, could even showcase their 2D commanders because right now it, it is just the 3D commanders if you have them or not that show off on the, the MVP screen. And I know a lot of players have awesome 2D commanders that they'd also like to, you know, once you hit that MVP screen, it'd be nice to say, hey, I got this 2D, ver I have Asher Ember, <laughs> the cat to show off here. Mm -hmm. So no plans right now, but we haven't forgotten about it. It's more about revisiting, you know, if we want to change up the, the, the whole aesthetic and look of the PBRS and MVP screen. <laughs> uh, next question here. Sorry. Um, when you brought back Halfaya pass, uh, you made it larger and then made the small version for World War II. Uh, could you make a second small version for World War II on the other side of the map? The same as the old original map. Uh, we can talk with more with level design on it. It's certainly doable. Um, let me be clear on the history of Hellfire Pass. Uh, a lot of you might remember it was originally called Scorpion Pass. And this used to be a PlayStation 4 exclusive map at launch. And it was at the original large scale version that you guys now see in the game uh, currently. And when we brought it over to the Xbox and knowing that a map of that size strictly for World War II was just not viable. And so we it's a 1.5 kilometer squared map. It's perfectly viable for Cold War, but it didn't lend itself very well for both balance and just most matches ending in a timeout in World War II. So that was the reasoning we kind of brought in the borders and made it a smaller map way back when. And yes, if I recall, that map version had the borders um, shifted a little bit more to the west side of the map, I believe. I, I believe so. Uh, while our new one is shifted a little bit more to the east. Reason being we made that choice is the original small version of Scorpion Pass. Uh, player sentiment was back then not certainly positive about it, and as well as the balance itself did not serve itself well. So we went with a new approach trying the other side of the map to see if that was a little bit better. Um, to that note, you know, still open to the idea we can work it out with level design. Um, I've also been talking about uh, some of our other maps and let's hear from the players. If you guys would be interested in seeing maps like Kaobong or Desful, Fredving, those are uh, three other um, exclusive maps in Cold War that did once exist in World War II, but again, their sizes were not viable. And there has been talks about setting uh, smaller borders for those so that they would be viable there as well. So we have tickets for it. Um, they just... We haven't been able to get back around to it. And Mannheim. Thank you, Mr. SPG. Yes. World War II Mannheim. Oh. Um, yeah, so to sum up, Hellfire Pass and other Cold War maps that are exclusive, um, we can look about, see about moving the borders and have different versions of them. Yeah, the, the original was very, very large. I remember when the, when that first came out. It, not only that, but the original was also very steep. We made the map very tall right. with uh, deep canyons and a tall mountain to climb. And, I mean, if you're like a, a very su super heavy tank of any sorts, you're not making it up there. Or you, if you are, you're spending the entire match climbing that mountain. Um, interestingly enough, Hellfire Pass was our second ever community map right after Vineyard's release 
with the goal of kind of equalizing out the uh, the elevation a bit more, uh, bringing up the the deeper canyons and lowering down the highest elevation of the mountain, just to help um, address the issue of that sluggish climb it would take to get around the map. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I remember when we did some of those changes, the elevation changes, you had a, a, a GIF image that we presented here on the stream that was showing you like the different elevation changes that you did as well. Yeah. But yeah, definitely forgot about that. Really quick, um, a loaded psycho. Can we get the full version of Nabelberg for World War II? That is a no. Uh, that full version is a 1.4 kilometer squared. Uh, that is on par with the same sizes of the maps uh, like Desful and Kalbong. For and we already had to pull those due to the sizes there. But that's why we created the smaller version for World War II and tried our best to keep in, uh, in mind the important gameplay spaces of that map. So it's still viable for World War II. Uh, no plans on bringing the big one into World War II. Next question here is, can we have the option to design, or sorry, I think I, uh, oh yeah, no, I, I, my apologies. I lost my, lost my place and uh, now we're back. Can we have the option to design and change the color of the tracks for your tank? Uh, it's an interesting idea. We would certainly have to build a, a supported system to allow for this. And this also goes, um, well, we, we can talk it out with art and production if there's something that we can do about it. Because I was also thinking along the lines of how much players are asking for, like, being able to put, like, custom uh, aesthetics onto tanks, being able to put a decal or emblem anywhere on a tank and not just the designated areas that we have currently right now. We know that's still something players would enjoy, uh, but that's a, a system that we'd really have to revisit in certain ways and think about well, what, what does it mean for the current going system and how do we address this going forward? Um, no promises on it, but we're, you know, I, because it's brought up, we are aware of the interest of it, but no movements on there. <laughs> pink. Yeah. Pink tracks. Um, yeah, it, it'd be, well, the first thing I thought was like adding like rubber pads or, you know, doing something, uh, more historically accurate. Um, yeah, it'd mm. be interesting, right? I don't know if, uh, changing even the design, I know somewhere like angular, or like reverse uh tank tread designs you know which were made to like grip different surfaces right so, yeah, so now we're talking about like gameplay mechanics right right well like i that. mean if that, we're gonna well, go that cool. far right yeah yeah oh man that, that reminded me uh remember when we had our mud in game you just kind of get stuck in it i think that takes us right to the next user question in fact <laughs> <laughs> not sure if you knew that was coming <laughs> but uh next question how about adding mud effects to tracks and wheels <laughs> when we're driving through water? Uh, we did actually used to have that. And uh, I forget why it was, it kind of got abandoned or didn't make it to the, the latest updates. Um, can follow up with our tech team, our art tech team, to see if that's something that we could bring back in certain regards. Because uh, we even had like a whole accumulation effect of like if you're sitting still, I believe, like in the snowy environments, you know, your treads as well as your tank um, start to collect a lot of snow on top of them. Uh, let's see. Next question. Uh, I'm an older gamer. Is there any way to make outlines for tanks darker when spotted? Uh, also, could we get a white outline for enemy <laughs> tanks? I think it would be better for maps with a lot of red. Um, unless I'm misinterpreting the question, because I, I think they're asking make the outline of tanks darker while at the same time a white outline for enemy tanks. I, I don't know if I quite follow, but what I do gather is the need to have better outlines for at least faster target acquisition and knowing where the, your enemies are at, because yes, there is a lot of visual noise and maps that could be hard to pick up on that. Um, this is certainly something we want to do to improve uh, just the UI and HUD elements of the game, making it easier. You know, for, you know, we, we understand it's an accessibility thing as well. A lot of players, you know, don't have, you know, keen eyesight, like younger players that are joining these games. I can't even keep up with people in <laughs> some of these other games that are happening. Um, so it is something we want to make some updates and improvements on and just, 
overall visibility of when a tank is spotted, yes, you can clearly see where it's outlined. As actually, this actually took me to another point. We do have a work ticket that we're looking into, uh, similar to uh, Royal Tanks PC mechanics, that better um, showcases to you when a tank is behind cover. Right now, we show you the full outline of the tank, and it could be easily assumed that you can hit them wherever it's at, but it's not clear you know, if there's like foliage blocking your view and there might be actually some hard cover, we are thinking about a solution in which helps visualize to you, the players, when there's a spotted tank that, you know, a portion of this tank is actually um, shaded differently and you won't be able to damage it because it's actually behind cover in some ways. Uh, so we, we are thinking on that. It would definitely be useful and, or, or interesting at least, right? Because it could be a tank behind a rock and then just like their barrels out, but there's like a tree in between. So you can't really see right. And the whole tank is outlined because thinking that, you know, you could shoot the whole tank, but you know, they're actually right. behind the hard cover. Good, uh, good, good ideas for updates here. Uh, next question here is, is there any way to make it possible to be able to visit, uh, another player's garage or maybe just even your platoon mates? This was, okay, possible, we are crossing our fingers and hoping for something like this sometime into the future. One of the original design pillars of garage customization was a social element. Dang it, where is Nick G when you, when you need him in the chat? Um, so we were originally designing with it in mind for uh, uh, allowing players to come see each other's garages. And even with platoons in mind, trying to think of a way that allows all three players to bring their tanks into another player's custom garage and be like, oh, wow, look at all this <laughs> cool garage gear you have laid out around here. Uh, and a great way to also showcase, like with a tank showcase garage gear, you could show off some of your premium tanks, show off the, some of the cosmetics or tank skins you put on them, and of course your MOEs. So this was very something we were trying to uh, move toward, but it was a whole complicated system for us to work toward that. And so at launch with the custom garage, we did introduce this kind of new platoon screen um, that had some effort thinking about how this could allow players to visit uh, other players' garages, but ultimately the amount of work and scope to do so, we had to kind of step back a little bit on delivering it. That was then. We are still thinking on it. We still want a way for players to maybe have like a garage uh, menu of like friends and you can go and just see their garage. And it's not necessarily because you're in a platoon in some way. Um, but we are definitely thinking of better ways for visiting players' garages and just showcasing, uh, you know, players have can do some bragging rights, show off their tanks and cool garages, right? Um, which is also why we do the, the garage showcase sometimes here on our Twitch streams. Because we know players take pride and love to show off their garages, and we are trying our best to also, like, hey, look at what uh, Petty did this week. Uh, was he the one that had all the cannons? Or No, he had all the, the light-up pandas weeks ago. It was Goliath Games with all the cannons. And then, uh, so, yeah, pandas, yeah. the cannons. Yeah, I mean, it would definitely be interesting right, to see what uh, other people are doing. Uh, I saw a comment here saying uh, something about... <laughs> Use VR goggles to to visit custom garages. <laughs> VR comes up once in a while for this game. It, there, there was a time years ago it was on while we were thinking for you know years down the line new features that we in uh, hardware we wanted to support in some ways. Yes, VR was on there, but I mean the VR market still very much niche. Uh, think about us on the Xbox and PlayStation platform. We'd only be able to uh, support this on the PlayStation platform. There are so many UI elements and gameplay uh, uh, parts of the game itself that is not built right for VR, and not to even mention the uh, uh, nausea effect you might get in the gameplay itself. Right. I know both of us, at least, uh, we're, we're pretty big VR fanatics, but yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Goliath Games. I I remember you won uh, an award for Best VR 2022. Mm -hmm. I, I forgot you made your own uh, experience. Yep. I, I do actually. I did actually download that. I mean, nominated. Congratulations. That's awesome. I forgot about that. That's definitely awesome. Uh, yeah. If you haven't uh, checked that out, go ahead and check that out. It's uh, you know one of our uh, community, you know, World of Tanks community. Uh, 
ambassadors here. We should definitely take a look if you if you're able to. Uh, next question here: Are there any plans to add more artillery tech tree lines to World of Tanks uh, from other countries? Currently, no, but we we do hear the feedback. Uh, from time and time again, when's the next artillery, when's a, even a premium artillery, a new tech tree line and such, uh, no current plans on it, but just know because we're, uh, you know, we're hearing it. It's, it's on our minds. Uh, VR is too much of a physical effort. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's a way to get some sneaky exercise in there. <laughs> we could do, there, there was some sort of VR tank game I played. I forgot the name of it um what's difficult v, there are vr games that are fun just to play with a regular controller gamepad you don't ne always need to have like all this motion control stuff but a sense of presence does go a long way um and it would be an amazing experience to play vr in a tank game when you actually feel seated inside of the tank itself and you can like lean forward and look through the optics window or get down in the driver's seat etc feel like you're physically there in certain regards right um, but there was some tank game I played and it was a lot of like motion steering and pulling levers or push, put, uh, pointing at buttons without that tactile feedback, it felt very loose. And oftentimes the, um, w when you're trying to interact with their systems, it wasn't very immediate and didn't feel right. Feel free to talk to me on VR. I, I was once a VR nut myself. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, tactile is, uh. A very big part of it for me as well. Oh, yeah. alrighty. Do you think uh, we pull some winners here, Mr. Bam? Yeah, I, I, I mentioned this earlier. We're gonna keep, we had to cut this one just a touch short this week. I am keeping an eye out if there's anything else <laughs> that kind of you guys point out in the chat, and I'll try to address. Um, let's do a uh, a giveaway. We have two uh, commanders uh, to give away to two lucky winners. Uh, Jolly Roger, he does come with uh, some of his own unique pirate VO. And then Ember and Ash, uh, 2D cat commanders to another lucky winner. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and choose another winner here and download. I forgot there was two. So. Ma Max Minor uh, Tanker, how about a 3D Ash commander, the cat, right? That walks in front of your aiming reticle and view randomly during the match. I mean, I get that already in life <laughs> in our play tests and playing the game. I don't need an added layer of that happening <laughs> in the game. That would be funny. Uh, oh, wait, did it just happen? I thought I saw something on your camera. I thought it was uh, your your kid. No, no. no he, right. he, he be napping. Are we ready for our first giveaway here? Who's our winner? Let's make it the. Um, the Ash and Ember 2D All cat right. commanders. The winner of our Ash and Ember commander here is Hoss M. Hossum. Hossum. Hoss, H O S S M. And then a bunch of numbers uh, 152 0001. Congratulations, Hoss M. You are a lucky winner for the Ash and Ember commander and our Ooh, second geez. winner here is you ready mr man for jolly roger who's getting jolly roger this was a big favorite occam davis congratulations occam davis you are our lucky winner gg's awesome. in the chat go ahead and put your names in chat just so uh you know who i was talking about i know i butchered your names Um, and yes, I saw it go by in the chat as well. Um, thank you, Max Chaos, putting the link. If you guys do have more questions you'd like to submit and hopefully have us uh, answer next week's stream or ne uh, following streams, uh, submit it to that link that uh, Max Chaos put up earlier. All right. I think that about wraps it up for us here this week, Mr. Bam. Yep. Uh, I got to run. We got uh, got meetings happening. Oh, but, uh, all right. We'll, we'll be on next week. I know uh, s some people said that they had success with the, the Twitch um, 
drop link. Some people say that they did not. Uh, we'll continue to investigate and we'll rectify this. This is the purpose of this test, <laughs> this, the this beta, test. beta test here to make sure everything's working correctly. So definitely appreciate everyone's uh, patience and we will get everything resolved. And hopefully for next week, we'll be eligible to actually do the test in person. So um, keep your eye on our portal for more information. And until then, we'll see you on the battlefield. Have a fantastic weekend. And we're going to go ahead and raid one of our community contributors. So if you're on Twitch, stick around. Thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.